collect into a data frame. A data frame, you want to think of it as just essentially columns and rows. It's like a Excel spreadsheet or table. Um, except the data is array or column oriented. Um, so when you want to do operations on this data, you want to do it on the columns or on the rows um, so that you get the, the seed of vectorization. Do some of the I'm uh, displaying some of the data types, you know, in one data set, these are all 464s. This could be a numpy and the array. Other data set, we've got mixed data, some text, some numeric. So pandas gives you a whole bunch of, of methods, so some, mean, um, select individual data, you can do all kinds of calculations very quickly. Um, I want to get a little bit of, of intro into what you can do with pandas. So now I'm going to switch over and talk about, well, you know, you can, you can crunch it. You can do a lot of you know, data processing. If you're a data engineer, a data scientist, you know, you often need to clean up data before you have to do any sort of modeling. Um, so I'm going to switch over to some example visualizations. That's, you know, if you want to play um, data and get into, you know, the school interactive graph, um, that's another thing to get out of notebooks. If you're writing like a regular script, you don't, you don't. So, you can add widgets like sliders. Um, do all kinds of data visualization. So I didn't talk about how to execute these things. Each cell like comes up with a, a play button. It lets you execute that cell. First, I've got to connect to Inferno. Um, so this computer is out of Google style. Um, I've got 12 gigs of RAM, 170 gigs of this. I didn't have to install anything. I didn't have to install um, all the library tools for um, Canvas and Python. Now that I spun up and run the cell, you see that there's a check mark here that's saying that it's done. So, the value of the slider that I just, that I just moved. One library that you probably want to take a look at is uh, Vega um, and all And they're all about visualization. There's all kinds of uh, interesting graphs that you can build with them. Stock picker lets you interact and pick individual stock. Set the graphs so you can select, you know, points from one of the graphs and it'll show you this is uh, cars. Um, graph by acceleration and miles per down in one graph and the force power of miles per down in the other graph here. You know. I'm getting some. It's all kinds of. You can show so another thing you can, you can do is like 
like I said, you, you can refer uh, to uh, an object or a data frame in this case, and it will automatically print that the values of that object. Um, Google Colab, this is not actually a pandas feature, but this is what we're This pandas, you know, you've got data in a table, that's it. You can't really sort or do anything like that. But Colab will let you um, add a feature to sort by values in the table. I mean, this this is something else that I that I missed. Colab has these snippets that let you find um, different code resources, all kinds of things. Like you can add forms. This this particular cell that I picked up was camera factory, but this just lets you like pick so many interesting um, libraries or features that you can go play with and. So this one, pick, pick a frame from the video and save that image. Like I said, data all carries like this amazing library um, that lets you do all kinds of visualization pipeline. Um, these graphs are actually like embeddable in the HTML. Um, you save the data as like JavaScript and you can embed them in the web separate from the code that you use to generate. Prolab has some amazing how uh, started um, tutorials and all kinds of uh, documentation to what uh, this you can dig in and find some um big amazing thing up here. This notebook. And it's um, fine styles of artwork or um, images to other images. I'm doing this in real time. Like you're seeing me run this stuff, even though it's running on the cloud, you know, and this is a free tier, not, not a paid um, account. Like you, you can do so much with this just to get yourself started and, and learn a lot. So this grabs images off of Wikipedia. Um, for possible choices. Content image and then a style image. So in this case, it looks like um, the golden gate and then the uh, wave and <clears throat> this um model will apply the Takagawa style to the, the golden gate. The rest of this notebook like lets you play with that and um Going to take this is going to take a while to download some of these images. Where did you find this? This I found. Um, I think, how do you find things? I, like this? I think <laughs> you found <laughs> so that you could understand this go through here and find it. Um, And, and 
TensorFlow specific thing. That's what it's this is one that I just picked. It, it's um great software, and then I, I'm not familiar with the statement, but then her face you done in that file. Um, object detection is another tool for AI uh, or machine learning thing that you can do. Um, one thing to note, like you are limited a little bit in how many connections you can make. As I try to connect this, it's probably going to talk to you and say, hey, I close them down and, and um, Sometimes you get output saved. Um, so this this is the image that I previously ran with, and then you know it detected the birds here. But you can play with all kinds of different um, object detection models. So many like, button stress and then dials to turn. Here's all the models that, that this particular example shows. Some of them are just different sizes, but a lot of them are completely different, you know. I looked at uh, what we could do with uh, chat GPT. Now, this is just um, connecting to the API, but there are actually simple um, models that you can that you can <coughs> um, download. And or not download, but um, import into the page and actually play with them. Um, just to do a lot. You see that there's like sometimes pit installations, installations of supporting libraries for Python. Not all built in. You do have to go grab some of those libraries and stuff. But there's so many interesting like, examples and um, tutorials to really help you sort of get jump started. Running the chat GPT client uh, or I'm calling the API, so you can ask that uh, GPT anything if you want. Ask it to tell me a uh, poem about uh, Jupiter notebooks. Questions? You're going to sing it for us? <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's so many, so many interesting AI things you can do here or data science type things. Um, I just I wanted to show you that it's a low barrier of death that you use to do the collab. Some of the other um, cloud providers they have Jupyter notebooks as well. Um, you can always install it yourself if you don't want other people having the data. Um, but uh, you know, if you're doing any serious AI, you're going to need uh, GPU. So that 
depending on if you, like NVIDIA has the Kuda library and a lot of the TensorFlow uses those. Um, so you don't have a GPU, you don't have an NVIDIA GPU. Uh, this one, uh, this is the next thing now. But now a AWS has a uh, settings maker. Essentially, the same kind of Jupyter notebooks. Um, Jupyter has Databricks, which is a little bit different. And so um, you get a lot, a few extra um, interfaces to other like data engineering libraries. So, anybody have any questions or anything? Yeah. So, uh, I use I do use them, but um, they were more for data exploration. Uh, so, we, we use a lot of AWS and Azure um, data pipeline type technologies. Uh, as we work actually moving into Azure, or more, and we'll probably be using that notebook style um, processing as we go forward. But yeah. we're, we're still mostly in AWS, and still mostly doing you know, Python processing data. So, what is the nature of Azure? Um, I'd say the advantage is you have very quick feedback. Um, you, the notebooks make it kind of easy to share articles and code at the same time, as opposed to just all of the article. With, okay, here's why I made these decisions, and here's the theory behind this. Good just for development because you can get the cell and run a cell and then operation where you read in tens of gigabytes of data and you don't want to do that again. Well, you don't have to run that as you're editing the next cell and realize you made a mistake. Oh, you don't have to start that at the beginning where it's strict. You could get around that. You can, you can comment out though that you don't want to make it a little more natural to, and simple to um, just not run that cell and you know, continue. The final um, process of pipeline is a little rough. That's possible. Um, there's, yeah, that's right. I think it is. I mean, there is sharing. I, I don't know um, if you can. It's basically just a Google Doc, right? Yeah, that's what um, I want. Yeah, this is like a cell. I mean, the, the files themselves are actually uh, JSON. The, the notebook, when it gets saved, it's a JSON uh, script or a JSON file. And uh, so it doesn't play well with GitHub. <laughs> like if you're using sex, it, 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 doesn't, uh, it doesn't play well. But um, but other than that, like, yeah, you can, you can share it. I don't know if you can collaborate with it. Um, I, uh, I seem to remember it, like, it wasn't as easy as, like, I can't really see them. Like what they're typing in real time. Um, but like when you save or update a cell, um, it'll update for the other person. Since you mentioned GitHub, do you have a way you recommend of like version control in this or saving them or anything? 
in GitHub and that will um, pull that pants up in this way. Um, um, you, you can view notebooks in GitHub. You can't edit them, though, but you can view them. So you can actually get renders for the cells and mark them in that focus. And Colab um, gives you a, a way of crafting a link that will take you right into Colab. Um, so you can save files and share that GitHub repo and you can split that link and go right into their own Colab instance with the copy of the code. Um, but yeah, in terms of uh, long term maintenance so the uh, notebook, I There a defined process or recommended process for going from notebooks to production? Um, not that I know of. I mean, there are a lot of, there's a lot of um, development towards uh, data engineering production tools. I, I'm not a fan of that, to be honest. I feel like when you're going to production, you really want to turn things into standalone scripts. You can save um, a notebook as a Python script um, and you know, get get to something we can pull it through more there. Um, but uh, there's a lot of innovation happening right now where people are trying to automate notebooks. There's some uh, module called Paper Mill that lets you um, launch notebooks, you know, based on Cron uh, style uh, times or other dependencies. But um, yeah, I don't know that there's like an established way of, of really turning things into uh, production. Feels like it makes it better. Yeah, I mean, I, I think notebooks are more all about exploration and maybe fast development, but not um, the, the bulletproof production development. That's, what, that's my take. Talk to you guys. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>